Hey guys, I wanted to talk to you guys about the Rocket Rhino race tail today. This is Rocket's take on a wedge for your back foot. I don't think I've seen any company do it in this way. It's pretty unique. So I'm going to be telling you how it's been stacking up so far. But first, what is a wedge and why is it necessary? I think wedge can be used as a general term for anything that sort of locks in your back foot um, to help you skate these little boards a little better or really any board generally better and there are actually a couple different types of wedges but before i talk to you about the different types of wedges available let me tell you why wedges are necessary and why they're pretty nice to have on board so the first reason is that they lock in your back leg with your back leg like this you kind of have more of a contact patch with your board and this is really nice it prevents your uh, back foot from sliding around when you ride over chanda over road imperfection number two it gives you something to push against when you're doing slides and that's always sort of um, nice and finally it gives you a reference point for your back foot so you always kind of know what your back foot is doing also fun fact this is the third time i'm recording this video the audio is a little bit messed up uh, my mic is spoiled or something like that so apologies if that annoying buzzing sound is being annoying sorry now let's talk about the different types of wedges available so the most common type and a lot of people disagree with me is wheel flares okay it's not really a wedge but it does a lot of the same things that um, all the other things i'm going to show you do um, acts as a reference point for your back foot you can push against it and gives you more of a contact patch with the board uh, when you're in tuck so yeah but it does have its disadvantages it's quite intrusive it isn't as comfortable and you can't really customize it to your person you know you're stuck with working with what you have and the other style of wedge that you can come across are concave mods and in this category i want to place torque blocks you know uh, those items you make you know when you layer duct tape under the ball of your foot those items are max cap cells you know and a torque block is basically an angled foam wedge that you place on your deck and it does have its advantages and disadvantages so some advantages of it is you can really personalize it to work well for you right you can put it as close as you want as far as you want you can't do that with some of the other wedges you're at the mercy of how your deck is shaped with the torque block you can make it work for you and some disadvantages i'd say that uh, some of them aren't properly dense they're a little bit squishy like this venom torque block and sometimes when i'm doing aggressive sliding or when i'm on a really chandery road i kind of lose sensation of what my back truck is doing because of a because of the foam wedge this can also have its advantages uh, but it is a weird feeling and i feel a little bit disconnected from uh, the undercarriage but slide perfect does sell really dense foam wedges and i think i'll actually be switching out uh, my venom truck block for that one finally they can be quite unergonomic and a little bit intrusive um, you can't get used to how it feels uh, but personally sometimes i find because uh, i cruise on my boards a lot having a foam wedge with a really aggressive um, angle can be quite intrusive finally let's talk about an actual wedge so basically in this situation the actual mold of the deck is wedged up and you get this wedge and out of everything i've mentioned so far this is my favorite it feels the most natural feels the most unintrusive and it does everything pretty well but it does have its disadvantages so because it's angled it's angled up right you need a angled riser in order to keep everything flush the angle of this is actually seven degrees and if i just stuck a 20 degree base plate under there it'll come out to being 27 degrees so i do need a seven degree d wedge to keep all of that flush but apart from having longer bolts, apart from having to have a, um, a high angled riser in the back, there are not really many disadvantages. Actually, I would skate this board a lot more. It's just I really don't like the shape. The taper doesn't suit me. I don't really like how narrow the front is. But otherwise, I really do dig how all of this is. And finally, let's talk about Rocket's approach. So I think this is actually really, 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 really unique. I've never seen another company do it. Basically what they've done, they've taken the normal board and added six more um, layers of wood plies, six more plies at the back in order to give you um, this sort of wedge. And honestly, out of everything that I've showed you so far, um, this one is the most natural feeling and it feels like I'm in contact with the board um, in the best way. 
and it doesn't feel as intrusive as the other wedges right it just kind of feels like the back of my board has has a little bit more rocker um, so that's actually a, a really nice sensation and also they've sort of drilled holes here so you don't have to use like really long bolts in order to um, attach your truck to your board i really really like the concept and i'd love to see rocket applied to some of their other models but there are some disadvantages so because it is in a fixed position you kind of have to adjust your stance to make the most out of it i wish rocket had like multiple wheelbase options which they actually do but maybe more extending back because um, there are some here already in order to allow me to shift the wheelbase around so i can shift um, the board to fit better under the ball of my foot rather on the ball of my foot to be here um, a little bit better and the other disadvantage i'd say is weight it does weigh a little bit but honestly it's pretty negligible i really didn't notice anything so yeah like i said it's a really refreshing concept um, it's really nice to see but should you go out and get it i do think if you're in the market for a new board and you do want a wedge at the back you should absolutely consider this but if you already have a board that you like that you're happy with but you do you want a wedge it just makes more financial sense to spend 10 15 20 dollars on a foam wedge from slide perfect venom or even nemo uh, skate products and get that instead it just makes more financial sense and i don't think this is game changing enough that i'd be like you guys need to run out and go grab a race tail but I do think it's pretty cool and I do think if you do get one you'll be pretty happy okay but now that we're done talking about the race tail let's actually talk about the performance of this as a board now as always this board from rocket as always high quality the durability seems great and actually it seems like one of the best boards they've ever made out of everything I received from them nothing has looked this good the performance was quite good but because of the width and because of the taper, I felt like it negatively impacted um, how much I was able to squeeze out of this board. Okay, but before I go in depth about what I didn't like, I do wanna make a big point that I do have fairly big feet, not that big feet to be honest, but if you have smaller feet, if you are smaller in stature, you may not share the same problems I have, so do keep that in mind. Okay, so for the vast majority of my riding experience, I did actually skate pretty well. Like I think I skated really, really well. I took good lines, I was pretty fast. But because of the width, I did feel that um, I wasn't able to squeeze as much performance as I could. And this is the, these are the problems that manifested from that. So number one, I had to change my footstop position to be more on top of the truck. And I did this in order to get a bit more leverage over the front truck to get it to turn in as aggressively as I would like it to or as, or rather as, as I was used to. And now the other thing, because the board isn't actually all that wide, it's only 8.5 inches at the widest and actually where my feet go, I think over here is about 8 inches or slightly less than that. And where my heel goes, it's about 8.2 inches, which isn't a lot of leverage. Coming off from my other board, uh, where my heel goes is about 8.7 or 8.6. So it's quite the difference. And the problem that this gave me was at the edge of traction, I wasn't able to sort of ride it comfortably and sort of um, make my wheels scrub. Like I'd get to that edge, I'd be on the limit at a corner. And instead of the wheels then scrubbing because, you know, I'm... I don't, I don't want to say over leveraging, but like I'm really getting the board to turn in under me, right? I'd just, I wouldn't turn in as aggressively, basically. And I wouldn't be able to ride that edge as, I wouldn't be able to edge <laughs> as much as I'd have liked. So that was a big problem for me. And I don't think I'd have been able to sort of um, ride this board at my best. I didn't try the narrow wheelbases. I only tried the 20 inch wheelbase. Uh, maybe that would have fixed it, but uh, I'm not sure. The other thing, it also affected how I would position my weight on my feet when I was sliding. Usually, I just sort of dump weight on my heels. Uh, not really, it's a bit more nuanced than that. But in this case, I had to be more on top of the board. This also negatively impacted how I was doing stand-up slides. Usually with stand-up slides, I just sort of kick out, put weight into my heels or put weight into my toes and just hang out there. Because I didn't really have all the leverage to do that, my feet sorry my weight was more in the middle of the board and 
I mean, I was able to do like small standees, but it wasn't confidence inspiring for me. That said, again, if you do have smaller feet, maybe it's not as much of an issue for you. Nonetheless, I was still able to ride the board pretty well. I like to squeeze as much performance as I can out of my boards, which is why this is a deal breaker for me. But if I was just doing casual riding, um, it, it wouldn't really be a problem. So yeah, and it's a damn shame because honestly in this board, I see the potential for some for me to ride it like for the next two years and not look at another product. So it's really disappointing. I do think what I'm going to do when I do have the money is approach Rocket again, ask for a custom with the race tail, but just make it a little bit wider where it matters for me. So yeah, anyway, thank you guys. Thanks for watching. I hope this has been informative and yeah, let me know if you like the race tail and if you do have your own race tail, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching. Shout out to me for filming this video for the third time. I hope I edited it the same day and, and can be done with it. But yeah, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you guys soon.